Hello everyone, Rich Hagen joined at the desk by Pro Tour Hall of Famer Mr. Randy Bueller. And Randy, we are here to talk about the Shadows over Standard. Where do you want to start? Standard is transformed. Oh, I, I agree. I think that this is one of the most impactful rotations in the history of Standard. And, and if you think about it, we're really, this is the first time we've gotten this new rotation policy to kick in, where it used to be Standard would change about every 12 months, now it's changing every six months. So two sets out, one set in, it's gonna be awesome. We're gonna see so much new magic this weekend. In terms of what's out, Khans of Tarkir, Fate Reforged, let's take a look at some of the cards you will not be seeing this weekend here at Pro Tour Shadows of Rinistrad. Randy. You got some time? We could, we could be at this for a yeah. while. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the biggest change for me is actually the fetch lands. So I think this is just by far the most impactful change. No longer having fetch lands means all of those crazy four color decks where it's like, oh, I've got Siege Rhino, but I've also got Jace in my deck. Like, you can't really do that anymore. Like, you can make a three color mana base work. As long as you're not too aggressive, you can kind of get there. But I think most of the decks in Standard are now gonna be two color. But yeah, no fetch lands and Siege Rhino, obviously, was just been the marquee card for a while now, but gone. Okay. No more. Uh, well, let's find some more cards that are not going to be seen this weekend, and we stay with Multicolor. First of all, Mantis Rider. Yeah, I mean, it's more of this sort of four color good stuff decks that you don't get to do. You also lose Monastery Swift Spear, though. You know, the Yatarka Red decks don't have quite as much sort of crazy good one drops as they did, and Ding Dong, the Rally of the Ancestors deck is dead. Probably mostly. You still get a name Tuco Husk. You can still sack things for value. Can't really bring them back though. Well, you said we could be here a while. We certainly could. Here's another five cards you won't be seeing <laughs> this weekend. There yes. we go. Ugin is gone. No Crackling Dooms. No Wingmate Rocks. That Hardened Scales deck is gone. Sorry, Matt Nass. Yeah, well, we'll see what he comes up with next. That's what I want to see. Right, so they're all gone and also gone from the proceedings. There's still more cards that you know, love, <laughs> hate somewhere um, in that mix, Randy. Yeah, the Delve cards have just been with us forever and have had a huge impact on Standard. You know, Tassigar as a finisher, Dig, Hordling Outburst is gone from the Tarka Red decks. You know, those two sets leaving, that all by itself would have been enough to have a, just a huge impact, huge change to Standard. Okay, well, in a minute, we're going to get to all the new good stuff from Shadows of Innistrad. But just because a lot of stuff's gone doesn't mean everything's gone. So, Randy, what are, what are the familiar players that we're already using in our standard decks? Yeah, these are some of the most interesting questions for me. Sort of what's gonna show up that's still here? And I, I think we know Collected Company is gonna show up. Even just the couple weeks we've had with this standard, it seems clear that Collected Company is one of the most powerful cards running around. Jace is also an extremely powerful card. You can put those in the same deck. Then you've also got, okay, you've got the Megamorph package. Is Den Protector gonna be a big deal again? You know, Death Miss Raptor shenanigans? Mm -hmm. right. Maybe, we're kind of getting into the, well, let's see what matters stage. Okay, let's move on. Uh, let's find something that uh, Delirium would be useful for, as it turns out. <laughs> Hangerback Walker's in our next little package. Let's take a look. Hangerback Walker, Eldrazi Displacer, of course. And yeah, Silumgar and, Skull. Yeah, you've got Hangerback and there's stuff you can do with that. You know, Eldrazi Displacer, I put up here thinking, well, all those colorless mechanics. Like the whole last set had all of these sort of colorless matters cards in a world where you've got the best four color mana base maybe standards ever have. So maybe now's the time where some of those decks rise up. You know, Silumgar Scorn is a card that fits straight into the Esper Dragons deck. You've still got all the Esper Dragon stuff running around with Dragon Matters cards, Giant Dragon Lords. Dragons of Tarkir are still legal, and so most of the core of those decks can still be played. All right, well, well let's take a look. Uh, Dromica's Command, that's another oh, yeah. one uh, that's still available right now. Super good card. Also, Reflector Mage, Canvy Vista, and Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger. Yeah, I mean, I put Ulamog up here because a lot of the ramp, what the ramp deck would do, the old red-green ramp deck, many, you know, some of those pieces are gone. Many of them can still be put together. You definitely got Battle Lands as an important part of what's going on in the mana bases these days, and Reflector Mage is just a hell of a magic card. It really is very, very good. All right, that's what's gone. That's what's still here. Now it's time to find out what's coming. Here's our A to W. <laughs> 20 cards of interest. Always watching. So many cards in Shadows of Innistrad. And fitting for me that we kick off with a white card. I do think white probably has the lion's share of the goodness in Shadows, or at least that seems to be the, the, uh, the initial take on things. And always watching is just a great card, especially any kind of aggressive strategy, any kind of white weenie strategy. This card just makes everything better. It's a great, you, great magic card. I'll give you a half-white card next, Anguished Unmaking. 
Yeah, I mean, more on the control side of things. I think the black-white decks um, between this card and the Sorn that we'll get to later, you know, black-white seems to be taking a more controlish sense. You've got answers, and this card pretty much answers everything. Last time, Avacyn, not necessarily the best card of all time. This <laughs> time, Crikey. Wow, this card is just amazing. I mean, start with Sarah Angel. Okay, instead of Vigilance, we're gonna give you seven other abilities, including a whole other side. Oh, then you can have Vigilance back. <laughs> Great um, card. Lots of really good tricks with this as well. It isn't as straightforward as, yes, I'm an undercosted awesome card. There's a ton of stuff that we'll see okay. in action. Yeah, no, I mean, it's the fly. I, I love Flash. I mean, I just, the ability to play stuff at instant speed, whether it's instants themselves or, you know, creatures with Flash, mm. just gives you so much ability to interact with your opponent and sort of set them up and sort of walk them toward the trap and, you know, cover the hole with yeah. leaves and Abyssin springs out. First Planeswalker on our list is the werewolf. It's Arlen Cord. Yeah, I'm... I'm wondering whether there's a spot for Arlen. I mean, the card is very powerful. You look at this card and it's clear that she does a lot of awesome things. Now the question is, and this is true for a lot of these Shadows cards, is there a home, right? Is there a shell that can actually leverage the power that Arlen has? Um, super cool card, bare minimum. Now, is it gonna be fixture and standard? You know, ask me again tomorrow. Okay, um, time to go back in time to the Bygone Bishop. Yeah, this is a card that, because there's so many white weenie strategies and so many ways you can take white, whether it's super aggressive, whether it's maybe a little slower going up to Avacyn, whether it's splashing colors, you know, Bygone Bishop is another way you can take your white weenie deck. You can get that kind of mentor of the meek feel where every time you play a creature, oh, I'll just get another card. You know, the, all the cards with Investigator are just great. Mm. Keep taking the tablets. It's Declaration in Stone. And this might be the best card in Shadows. Like, in terms of what you want at a, you know, in a constructed deck. I just want to be able to kill it dead. I want to make sure we get rid of it. You know, it's not that much of a drawback that you give them a clue token. It's, it can also wipe out an army of token creatures. This removal spell is, it's just adding power to anybody who's got white mana that, and to use to cast it. Mm. Let's go to one of our land cards. It's time for Drown Yard Temple. Yeah, this is kind of a cute card we've seen uh, showing up in some of the, the you know, the Pyromancer's Goggles, blue-red control decks that have been uh, floating around. If you can discard stuff, well, it can come back. So you discard it for value, whether that's a Jace activation or any other sort of discard effect. And now you get this almost rampant growth effect of being able to play it from the graveyard back into play, moves your mana ahead and gets you extra value. It's just, I mean, it looks pretty innocuous, but it does a lot of stuff. It's even a colorless mana source, hypothetically. Let's see if somebody does anything with that. Right. Uh, a lot of pros uh, like to start off with a mythic rare or a rare, but if you're gonna start with an uncommon, this is super <laughs> popular. That's yeah. what's recruiting. I mean, it's funny. Limited Superstar, arguably the best non-rare in the set from a, from a draft point of view. I mean, arguably. And I actually think that people started to come to that conclusion after watching it in Constructed. You know, nice. some of the, the band, com, uh, company decks have been playing this as just a new two drop that can keep their hand full of stuff. And yeah, it's great and Constructed too. Reprint time, Fiery Temper. Oh yeah, such a good card. If, if you've got the ability to trigger madness, this card is spectacular. I mean, usually, especially in a constructed deck, you're kind of up a card anyway when you've got something with a discard outlet, because that discard was supposed to be part of the cost. So suddenly, you've got a lightning bolt. It's just super efficient. Um, will tend to be in more controlish decks, and obviously decks that can take advantage of the madness ability, but you know, I think this is, this is probably the madness card we're gonna see the most of. Now, Jace is next. I have one question for you. <laughs> it's a Planeswalker, so it's clearly good. Is right. it good enough? I don't know, maybe. I mean, a lot of this is, we'll find out this weekend. Right. I mean, it, it's pretty clearly not as powerful as Jace Vryn's Prodigy, um, which is relevant. I mean, you don't, can't have too many Jaces running around in your decks. Um, yeah, it's good, but again, like, I mean, it's almost like Arlen Court. Is there the right home to really take advantage of it? Okay, let's stay with Planeswalkers. Here's the new one, it's Nahiri. Now, this is one I have started to see people messing around with. You know, you can play Jeskai lists, you can play Naya lists. You know, she's just super powerful. I mean, being able to sort of get some card flow is nice. Sometimes discarding a card is an advantage. You know, 
killing any whatever creature happens to have attacked you the turn before she comes down is great. And that ultimate, you get there pretty quick, right? Turn you play her, she goes up from four to six. Next turn, suddenly you're at eight and go get anything from your deck. That's a pretty powerful ultimate that you can get to relatively quickly. Olivia is up next. Can she be mobilized successfully? I, this card looks so not so good to me. And I haven't seen anyone actually put the Black Red Vampire deck together that really takes advantage of her. I mean, maybe, the, I don't know if it's a metagame thing. I just, I look at the stats on this, 3-3 three, three flying for three is kind of super efficient full stop. Like before you even start talking about what all the rest of the words mean on this card. I, I gotta think that there's gonna come a point where she breaks out and we get that Black Red Vampire deck in standard. You know, maybe we need another set full of vampires. Maybe we need the metagame to get in the right place. Maybe, maybe somebody sleeved it up this morning and we just haven't got the chance to see it yet. Right, uh, when you need to get your opponents dead, this card can help. Let's take a look. Yeah, uh, Relentless Dead is up here as, I think one of the better black cards in Shadows. I think there's there's a lot of zombie synergies baked into the set. The question is whether there whether there's enough to bring the entire deck together. Right, so, Sorin, awesome. Grim Nemesis, awesome. Just six mana and worth every bit of it. Okay, um, on we go then. Let's see what's up next. Talia's Lieutenant. And this is the reason you're seeing so many of those, those white weenie decks. They're really humans decks. Whether you want to splash green, splash blue, all of them have Thalia's Lieutenant. It's just a, a very powerful card if in any deck where most of your creatures are humans. Next up, amazing fun, Thing in the Ice. It, it's fun, but it's also very powerful. Okay, yep. Right, it's, it's just the ability to reset a board and it hits super hard. Like, you might think, yeah, okay, fine, they picked everything I'm putting in their hand, but now you're attacking them with a seven power horror. Doesn't take very many hits to kill him dead. Does not. Uh, what about Thraben Inspector? What do we think of this apparently quite innocuous little thing? It, it doesn't look like much, but those white weenie decks, you get, you just want a body, right? It has creature type human, it's one mana, it doesn't take a whole lot else to make the cut in those decks. And, you know, one, two doesn't look like the stats we're used to seeing on constructed creatures, but that clue matters. As soon as you start to run out of gas, you cash it in, you know, between always watching and Thalia's Lieutenant, it's not really a one, two a lot of the time. It's just a, the card's in a super sweet spot, I think, for constructed. On the bottom of our screen is our tireless tracker. Here's another one. So much value. Yeah. It, I mean, it single-handedly fuels your late game from a card point of view and becomes a giant threat that your opponent has to deal with. That combination has, it's, you know, you're gonna see it, certainly you're gonna see it in the Bant Company decks that are running around. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's such a powerful card that I think you may even start to see people trying to work it into other shells as well. And we close with my favorite card in the whole set. It's Westvale Abbey. So much fun. Oh. Yeah, I remember reading this in the spoiler first. I'm like, oh, that's a great, you know, just a big Timmy effect. That's gonna be awesome fun for people in, you know, various, you know, various formats, but it's actually good in standard too. It's actually super, super powerful. So there we go, our A to W, always watching through to Westvale Abbey. We hope that you will be always watching as we head into the standard rounds here at Pro Tour Shadows over Innistrad.